and I forgot to zoom out. <laughs> I was so excited. Anyways, so we gotta we gotta cast this without zoom out, dude. That's so unusual for me. Unusual for me, you know. That's like crazy zoom, by the way, guys. What the heck is this, dude? I'm literally inside the fortress. We have the red model player Ave Ave at the top side versus the blue dwarven player Mr. Smoke at the bottom side with like default zoom off BFME games. Like I'm inside the fortress. I can smell the dwarven toilets you know what i'm saying i'm literally inside of that two mine shafts into the hall of warriors on the on the other side we see two slaughter horses and we will see eventually a third one dude i you know I, we, people they get too used to something you know right? in, in my case i was getting used to the uh, zoom zoom effect so the space zoom and this way i was able to control the zoom of the game the, the way i wanted to and it was just very confident but you know there is one thing every time every time you start your game for the first time you need to Click on this map, otherwise it's not gonna work out. So three slaughterhouses or pit on the other side, we see two mine shafts and a hole of warrior. Okay, I got you, bro. So the mineshaft is going to be found. We have a lot of orcs coming from the orc pits. And now we have the fourth production building, which is a Haradrim Palace. In the meantime, this mineshaft is under attack. Should be able to be protected though, from Smoky. Smoky has plenty of units around this side. Should not be a problem um, for the Ukrainian player. But this mineshaft is going to be taken down. So as we are talking, we have 500 command points available for Smoky. And 450 command points available for Mordor. One minute delay again? Yes, sir. If always one minute delay, that's what people wanted, the player, so... I mean, it's better this way. Even though I don't like delay myself, but I also don't like Fiesta discussions later on. Oh, he was stream sniping me and... Uh, ooh, you know, I don't...
all points collected after rebuild and running call. 600 command points for both the players. Big fort, big uh, you know, big fort in uh, back and forth game, but dwarves are now committing. The slaughterhouse here is going to be definitely taken down. Ave has a lot of orcs on the field. I mean, he's spamming all day long from three orc pits. Remember, orcs are just too cheap. They cost 80 plus 3, 30 command points. You know, you can spam them all day. And yet, even though they are not individually strong, but they are still strong in big numbers. Especially when they get 100 or more, more numbers in total, they will be also unlocking the blood, not the bloodthirsty. Awaken my warriors. The um, horde bonus. Oh, finally, some lancers. That's going to be a punish punishment. The first battle wagon has been taken down. The other one is running for his life. Is Smokey paying attention? He will be trapped here. Yes, he does pay attention indeed. It looks like he will be good to go for now. But I'm assuming Haradrum lenses are a bit faster. Yes, sir. Oh my goodness. Haradrum lenses, ladies and gentlemen. Two battle wagons gone. That's painful. That's going to cost him a lot of cash. And also time. Because he needs them, right? He needs two of them. One for the banner. And one for the well. For the, for the recovery. And also for the leadership. And even though they are kind of a little bit buffed. When it comes to recruit them. The upgrade is now a bit more expensive. Hey Falcon, welcome. Glad to see you in the chat. Is the stream constantly refreshing for anyone else? Um, hopefully not. But I think, I mean, I'm checking my, my end right now. For me, everything looks green. Hey Zero, hi, welcome. My girlfriend wanted to watch a movie, but I guess it's Fiesta time now. Big push from my girlfriend incoming. Oh, she's gonna hit you like a truck, but not in a good way, my friend. But trust me, trust me, trust me on that one, it's worth it. You don't want to miss those games. I've been waiting for those games since I saw the loser bracket. <laughs> I knew that's going to happen, you know? Sometimes you have like a feeling. I knew, guys, would you call me crazy when I would, told, would, would tell you that I exactly knew it would end up like it ended up now in the spring tournament? I knew it. I was just not sure if Avi, Smokey or Sauron is going to be in the grand finals from the winner bracket. But I knew... It's gonna end up in a consolation like this. I knew it since the beginning of the tournament. Many, many Harad on the field now for Mordor, and Mordor is killing. I mean, getting stronger every single second. Which is going to be scary at the end of the day for dwarves. Industry unlocked. That's pretty good. Now, use it on this one in the front, which has great protection. It's gonna be hard for Smokey to commit on this one. And he has also Dwarven Riches. So he went for Rebuild, which you need. If you want to go for the Dwarven Riches, you have to pick up the Rebuild first. You cannot go for it otherwise. And Dwarven Riches is pretty much like a Dwarven version of the industry for Isengard and Mordor. Pretty much does the exact the same thing. It just, you know, glows uh, blue and the other one glows red. But that's it. Is the stream more zoomed in? Yes, you are 100% right. It's much more zoomed in because I forgot to enable the zoom out effect. But it will be fixed for the next game. I cannot change this now. Um, but I will be able to fix it for the upcoming game. I'm all, it's also unusual for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the default zoom from the map for a while is just too much zoomed in. I think that's like, that's like crazy, my friend. Like you are legit not able to see anything on this map. What the heck is this? Okay, I mean, there is lots of pressure on dwarves. He's being surrounded. He's being overspent or overrun. And also 850 command points versus 675. The gap doesn't seem to be big now, but as we are talking, it's going to shrink further and further for uh, the player from Ukraine. Smokey is going to lose a lot of map control. As we are talking, this one is going to be taken down first. It's a level 2 mineshaft, and it means minus 75 command points in total for Smokey. What can man do against such a reckless hit? Too many orcs, too many haradrims, too many lancers. Just everything times five. That's how it feels like. Yes, quality goes normally over quantity, but in this case, we are talking about an outnumbering advantage times five. Girlfriends fell, wind, long shot combo incoming. Yes, sir. Grand finals, Auron versus Avia. Oh, who knows? Who knows? It's a best of nine. You guys, I mean, Ragnarok, you are clearly underestimating Sour, uh, Must, um, Smokey, my friend. You are clearly underestimating him. Smokey is a beast from the east, my friend. Trust me. 
Five power points collected. I mean, Avi is strong. I cannot tell you who's going to win. I think it's going to be extremely close. Just it was like also between Avi and Sauron and also Sauron versus Smoky. It was going all the way to game number nine. And there is a high chance that this also might happen in this best of nine in the finals of the losers. I mean, dude, it, it sounds so harsh, no? Losers finals, you know? You call them losers, like what the heck? I mean, they are like the best losers, though. <laughs> Many, many orcs on the field. Eight power points collected after the industry for Mortar. 825. Look his money. He's very close to recruit a Fell Beast. A Fell Beast is going to be a game winning point for Mortar. As we are talking, dwarves have literally nothing to deal with a Fell Beast. No extra worse, no man of the deal. Nothing like that. So the second Avi gets his Fell Beast, either Camille or Morgomi up on the field, I think Smoky might just like call it GG. And Mortar is like overwhelming, you know, in long terms. Like the orc spam. The industry, you can get also level 3 hara. I mean, you have so many. Like, the Mordor faction is one of the factions, if not the one faction itself, which has, like, plenty. And, I mean, literally plenty of opportunities. Like, you have unlimited options, right? You can go for the movement kill, attack trolls, mountain trolls, drummer trolls, haradrim hatches, Nazgûl, Mouth of Sauron. Like, come on now. Who can deal with this? Also, this mind shield is going to be taken down. Four seventy-five command points. Smoke is struggling, and we have very soon a Nazgul coming, boys. But look at this dude, Corsairs even up on the field. I gotta be honest, I've seen Corsairs in this tournament way more often than in any, any other event we have hosted so far for Rise of the Witch King. And when I say that, I mean it because you know I'm not talking about one or two events. I've been hosting now events for this for multiple years, and Corsairs were one of the most underused units. But I'm happy. That we get the chance to see them now way more often. It's always nice. I think every patch, every version of the patch should be aiming to make those less valuable or less seen units a bit more uh, reliable. You know, in this case, Corsairs, for example, I don't know, like uh, Dwarven Zealots eventually later on, you know. Or King Dean is also one of the most unseen heroes in the game. Oh, we have Klein on the field. Oh, the Fire Bombs. I plus Warchan, double buff. I is leadership. Warchan is a buff. And Smoky is dropping down to 475, while Avi is up to 975. And there comes a Felbis, ladies and gentlemen, Camille. How can we download the game? Uh, I'm sure that Barindru can send you a link. So there is a video tutorial. You can just watch this, like, four minutes. Uh, so basically, this game, what you are seeing right now, is Rise of the Witch King, which is an expansion for Battle for, for, Battle for Middle Earth 2. So in order to be able to play this game, you first of all need to have the base game. Give me too. But Palindro can send you a link from a video which will cover both the games in one specific video. It's like a 5 minutes video or 8 minutes video. But it will give you the chance to get both the games installed on your PC. Uh, 525 versus 1000. The Worm is available. Man of Teal was used defensively. Man of Teal is also one of the more underrated power points in my opinion to be honest barrage feels a bit more reliable in long terms like it's like a you know better 15 power point in my opinion but man of deal is also pretty strong because you will get the chance to summon multiple battalions of the man of deal and every single one of the battalions will have fire arrow upgrade so and also black arrows you know which means it can also be used against structures unlike the ranges summon for example for man of the west and Ave is playing out of his mind, but it might also be the matchup. There comes the second Nazgul. Like I said, you know, when you play Dwarves, I think your only bet or your only goal is to get a huge lead at the beginning of the game. And it feels like against pretty much every single faction, if you can't accomplish this goal, if you can't get a huge lead at the beginning, you will fall extremely behind. And fighting from behind, and you are playing with a snowballing faction, feels... Tough. Very tough. In sneaky little mineshaft with the Dwarven Riches, but it's going to be found by the two Nazgûs, the brothers, Camille and Smorgomir. Uh, there is only one hero, Gloin, and he cannot even target them as long as they are on their fell beast, you know? And the Worm is still being held, so Worm here can destroy the mineshaft and Hall of Warriors. I mean, Smoky... Is delaying his death. I don't think there is anything he can do in this game to turn this around. 
Like, how you want to deal with this two Nazgûls? He doesn't even bother peeking, you know, building up the archery range. Like, he can legit not take them down. He can... He has one... Oh, he has archery range somewhere. Where does he have the archery range? Because he has extrovers on the field. Ah, he was losing it. Okay, that's what it is. So he has only one extra over. What can one extra over do against such a reckless seed? You know, nothing. 1,000 command points available for Mortal Boys. Worm has been special summoned. And yeah. I mean, the Worm is coming in. The Hall of Warriors is damaged. Does he have rebuilt? Uh, yes, yes. So he can maybe delete this. The Worm should have time enough to destroy it even with rebuilt. Look at this damage. He needs to use it now. Oh, he's actually taking care of this. And the worm is kind of not focusing down the barracks. Now he will. Or oh, rebuild in the last possible second. That's good. But big commitment. I see you, Warchant, Black Orcs. And also Corsairs, Double Nazgul on the Fortress. Rebuild was just used on this one. So there is no more rebuild available for dwarves. And the Fortress of Smoky is going to fall into darkness. Smoky has been defeated, ladies and gentlemen. The first victory goes to the Turkish player Avi Avi in the best of nine. Our second Turki second best Turkish player after the Falcon. <laughs> oh, Isengard mirror match. Okay. Hey, where is Isengasm when we need him? Dude, Isengasm, it's your time and you are not around. Okay, finally, dude. Oh, hallelujah, bro. That's so it feels so freshing. I, I like this. We have the red Isengard player Ave Havi on the right side versus the blue Isengard player Mr. Smog on the left side. Good watcher for the for the six months primers. Pre appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hoodwatcher1 just resubscribed for 6 months. Ahoy. What about some ACDC Thunderstruck to get in the right mood? I bet you don't even like the Rise of uh, Lord of the Rings anymore. Dude, I, I like Lord of the Rings music too, but the problem is that only a few of them, basically the game music from Battle for Middle Earth itself, is like allowed to be played in the stream. And you know, I've been streaming now for 3 years, and every time, every single day I was streaming, I was listening to the same sound, 10 sound effects, sound tracks, over and over and over again. And at some point, it might be your most favorite song of all time. If you listen to it every time, three hours, over and over again, almost every single day, you might get kind of, you might be losing your mind. You know, that's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> so we have a Warpit opening for Avi. On the other side, we see a Warpit opening also for Smokey into the Warpit level 2. And I'm assuming... I mean, Avi is going to stick up with the warp, picks, uh, warp Packs. He won't be able to get any Warp Riders on the field because he was also building the Uruk Pit at the same time. And Smokey on the other side is actually not going for the Warp Packs at all. He's skipping them entirely and recruiting some Warp Riders for taking the Hobbits to Isengard 10 hour for some fresh music. <laughs> They're taking the Hobbits to Isengard. They're taking the Hobbits to Isengard. I will represent the men of Gondor. I will represent the men of the Gondor. CD, CD welcome. Seed Vito. I've seen your name before, Seed Vito. If I'm not mistaken. It's not your it's not the first time I'm seeing your name, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong, I might be wrong though. But anyways, thank you for the follow, appreciate it. Alright, so we will have a crossbow man for the defense and war packs for the for the offense. And Smokey is now building the Uruk pit. For the Urukai. So the thing is that if those war riders are gonna happen and they're gonna happen, and Avi is not prepared for that, he might actually get trampled with the crossbow man, and they might also deal great amount of economical damage. And when you open with a, such a strategy, what you can do as Isengard, you can also pick up the Kribin. You can actually skip your Warchant and go for a, for a debuff, since you already have like a buff in your kit. I mean, this also counts on the war packs, right? So, you shall see. I mean, he has, he's going for the second one. He gotta cancel this and recruit some pikemen. ASCP, cancel this and go for the pikeman because that's gonna hurt you. Yes, sir, he's canceling it and going for the pikeman now, but it might be a little bit too late. The war packs, they should not be um, uh, they should not be able to deal with the war riders. I mean, that would be kind of funny if they could. They have no chance, right? Nope, they have no chance. And Smoky is, is no going to be also losing one of this. Orcs. These are Orokai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. Yes, sir. This is no rebel of mind, this Oryx, is our dear Gollum. Against the power of Mordor, <laughs> there can be no there victory. Can be no victory. Yes, sir, man. Christopher Lee, my friends. Why so risky? Yeah. Biki, Biki says, welcome. I mean, it's pretty risky, high risk, high reward, but it didn't pay out. Because he wasn't even able to deal any economical damage to Ave. Yes, he dealt, like, great amount of damage to one single 
crossbow man, but that's all about it, you know? And now he even lost the Vork Rider. Buff level 2. Yeah, they are buff level 2 now. It's huge, actually. They will be respawning over time when they don't take any damage. And look at this. Who let the Vorks out? They have, you know, Vorks everywhere. The thing about the situation is the reason why Avi is coming ahead is obviously he doesn't need to spend 200. And these units, they cost half the money of the Vork Riders. So you can spam them. And also they cost less command points. So almost half the command points and half the price. So the Vork Riders, they are kind of risky for the fact that they are getting, getting countered quite easily. I mean, who, who wants to disable the music when more than two persons saying, Hey Shanks, can you please turn off the music so we can listen to the game sound itself? And let me know so I can mute it for you, but I can still listen to it, you know? But I'm not doing it for one person, you know what I'm saying? So if you guys let me know in the chat. Music, yes or no? Just type yes, music, no for no music. Okay, he was creeping also with the pikeman. Uh, he might not. He might be capturing this one, which is pretty good for Isengard. You will get the chance to recruit the Black Orcs, which are pretty damn strong, and also much cheaper. They cost 250, just like the War Packs, and they are almost as strong as Urukai. And I think that's the problem from Isengard. In compared to all the other factions, you have like a not like a cheap swordman. I mean, you have Whiteman of Talent, but you know. They are like a glass cannon unit itself. Oh, look at this. I mean, Avi is, is smoking smoke. Smoke is getting smoked from Avi today. I mean, the first matchup, you can say whatever you want. It's a dwarves against Mordor matchup, but that's a mirror match. <clears throat> I knew it. <coughs> I knew it. This game is not going to last for a while. That's why you need to be careful. Sometimes you are like in a loop situation. Sometimes you are doomed and you have to play the same matchup over and over again. So the matchup, Smoky dodged. Happens once again. We have the red Man of the West player, Ave Havi, against the blue Mordor player, Smoky at the bottom side. I'm using my dodges perfectly. Yes, sir. And Ave is not only leading 2-0, but he has also the dodge in his pocket. He can still dodge this matchup if he wants to. I mean, not this matchup, but the other matchups. We have two slaughterhouses and we have an orc pit coming up for Mordor. On the other side, we see farm, farm into the barracks coming up for man. So, what is the plan? I mean, man has like the chance, I think, also in this matchup to build like an offensive barracks, which is not looking like it's the case for Avi. He likes to go for like a traditional and more safe opening. Farm, farm, barracks into the third farm. And Mordor is doing pretty much the same. So, three slaughterhouses, orc pit number one into the orbit number two and use them as like a protection also to keep those slaughter houses protected again mordor has to play it a bit more defensively early on you know just to not to take too much damage from the man of the west player and if he can do that i think mordor mid game should be definitely able to handle whatever man is throwing at him you know but we shall see we shall see okay so Orc pits into the second Orc pit. I think what you can do eventually to deal with the soldiers of Gondor is you can eventually get one of your Orc pits to level 2, which by the way only costs you 200. And then you will be able to recruit the Black Orc warriors. They are much, much stronger than soldiers, especially when they get level 2. They are smashing them into pieces. And then you can spam normal Orcs from one Orc pit and the Black Orcs from the second Orc pit. Then you have like quality and quantity mix in one army. I think that can be actually quite nice. And remember, you know, Mordor has easy access to double buff, while Man of the West faction is the one faction that has no debuff. You know, that means you cannot shut down Eye of Sauron leadership at all. So soldiers were actually unseen. They are moving from the bottom location, and Mordor has no vision control. Look at the vision from Smoky. He doesn't see that. So he will be able to see them once they are around this side, which might be a little bit too late, and he might be losing eventually this one, or even this one. I think this one is going to be taken down. I think. You shall see. He's moving now from the right. From He's moving back with the orcs. I think that's not the thing you are looking for. But maybe he has no other choice. So he will be able to find this farm. But again, orcs are not dealing too much damage to the building. So they, you know, they need some time to take it down. And he might also be able to eventually find this farm. So the peasants or the spearmen are moving. They might be able to defend this. Orcs, they are supposed to be a counter, but again, they are the cheapest, but also the worst units in the game at the same time. 
they will still be able to destroy this farm and getting level 2 now. And they can now turn and fight those Rohan Spearman units. Yes, the Rohan Spearman might be still able to win this fight, but it's okay. Dude, they cost what? 300 each? 250 each? But they cost only 80 each. And look how much damage they already dealt to the Rohan Spearman units. In the meantime, the Slaughterhouse number 1 has been taken down. The Slaughterhouse number 2 has been taken down. And there is an another Soldier Battalion coming. So Orc Arch's damage is not the greatest, which is okay. For a faction that scales that hard into the mid to late game, your early game is supposed to be weak. That's absolutely fine. You might be able to find this farm. I think this one is going to be easier to be taken down than this one. I think the Fortress is going to shoot those Orcs down. We shall see. No, it's not. It's actually out of the range. I take it back. And in the meantime, Avi is also creeping. Pressuring, creeping, and defending at the same time. But it looks like this farm is going to be Archery still taken down. We have now the archery range. I was, to be honest, I was expecting this table. But that's not the case. I think if someone dodged in nah, that's we not do it. First of all, we are not changing the rules of a tournament when we are already in the finals. That's the first thing. And second thing is, if we take care of every single circumstance, which is pure lag based, then we might have to eventually restart the game 25,000 times. You know? Sometimes it's like, it is how it is, you know? Sometimes you gotta be smart about the dodge. You can get also a bad, worse matchup. And just because you dodge previously, should be now dodge every single time you get the same matchup. It doesn't make too much sense to me. And um, over those eight. thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Haradrim Lancers, trample on your face, son. Very good, very good, very good. And also getting away with the Haradrims, that's very good. A man has 500 command points in the bank, and Mordor has 450. There comes the War Chant, and Rallying Call is still on cooldown. The question is, can those orcs literally, I mean, still achieve something? But Ave is leaving those archers in an open area, and every single one of them is going to be taken down with one single trample. That's a big mistake. And, you know, the orc archers, though, they're actually dealing great amount of damage. Beautiful trample actually getting away from the pikemen. And look at this. Mordor cleans up every single unit. And this thing is, this army, which he just destroyed, is worth so much more than the army he's attacking with. But we have early range of transition from the men. But look at this. If they can get away, they would be huge. Can they get away? Can they get away? No, in the last possible second, the last shot. If they would be able to get away, they are level 2. They would be respawning over time. But it's unlucky. I think in a situation like this, you need to kind of gamble. When you kind of not sure that you can get away, I think you need to just commit and try to take every single one of the ranges down with you. The farm is going to be still under attack but the second orcs are gone orc archers cannot deal damage to the buildings so that's not possible mordor was at least able to put some pressure on man but man has already found the transition into the rangers and mordor hasn't so mordor also needs some stronger units on the field if he wants to be able to deal with the rangers in long terms the farm here will be definitely taken down maybe after the ranger battalion you can also look to recruit boromir the captain of gondor for the horn of gondor because Mordor has like a rough time getting the fear, res fear resistant. And you need to get Gothmog all the way to level 5. So it's a lot of time and also money investment. And with the Horn of Condor, you can actually combine this also with the long shot. I was pinging. Oh, he was almost losing the one-on-one -on -one situation against the troll. I wasn't paying attention. Level 2. Level 1, level 1. No heroes on the field. Not from men, not from Mordor. I think uh, when you spam this many orcs, Gothmog... Now, Gothmog is a good hero in any stage of the game. He has Fury, you know, just like the Carnage from Lourdes. And on top of that, you know, again, against Man of the West with Cloudbreak and Horn of Gondor, your Iron Hand, the level 5 ability, might actually be quite useful. And also splash damage with the Carnage, so or with the Fury, you can get into the backline and wipe out those Rangers. You can give leadership to the Orcs, make them stronger. Now, with the Steeple for the Gondor Knights. Now, Steeple... Archer range level 2. The rangers, though, they are hitting very hard. I mean, he had the chance to commit, but it's now too late. But he had the chance. Like, those pikes, they were not in the position. Beautiful trample into the front line, though. Into the soldiers. The pikes are kind of being only used to defend those rangers, which is the right call from Avi. Can he get into the jeans? Oh, tainted land. Beautiful micro from... Oh, Smoky didn't overcommit, though. He could have trampled farther and actually take them down, but it's okay. Tainted Land will also give it a buff, but Tainted Land will also slow down the 10 power points later on from Mordor. It's gonna slow down, in this case, the Industry Power Spike. The Rangers, they are badly damaged. They will be forced to retreat. And the Lancers, they shouldn't allow that. Just hunt them down. That's a lot of punishment if you can take down both of this battalion. 
It's, he, he will lose 1,000. Each ranger costs you 500. So losing them is going to be painful for men. And there are no pikemen nearby. Just keep committing. Keep chasing them down. Parm is level 2. And uh, soldiers are trying to body block to slow down those Haradrims. Orcs are chasing. And now we have also Gondor Knights. But the Haradrim lenses are badly damaged. I don't think they can do much more in this situation. And they get more and more and more ranges on the field from Ave at the same time. And he will also be able to save both the battalion, which is huge. The second they get, they recover, and they are both level 2, they will recover, even without the well. He will have in total 4 ranger battalion. Do it. Good luck dealing with this. I'm telling you. Good luck dealing with this. With orcs and easterlings only, there is no chance you can out damage those rangers. You need definitely some siege weapons or Haradrim archers yourself, or I don't know, maybe heroes like Mouth of Sauron can be a great investment too. You know, Mouth of Sauron has splash damage too, can trample, is tanky, can chase down the Gondor Knights. So definitely a very useful hero, but it's, you know, it's not like Mordor is rich. He's down to 575 command points, he has barely any resources collected, he has only one single slaughterhouse level 2, and he's almost... Yeah, he's broke. And man has also not much more money, but he has the Lone Tower Summon. And that's the one thing you need to understand. So every time you pick another power point, like a 5-5-5, five, 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 it it's good for a single situation, but it will be a big punishment later on for you to reach the 10, the 15, and 25. So basically, if Avi doesn't make a wrong call and just keeps getting ahead with the power point. So he has now the Lone Tower 10 power point. He can save up for 15 and then 25 right after. That will mean that Avi will, his, will get his 25 in long term, so way, way sooner than a Smokey can, you know? And this 25 power points, as you guys know, can be game changing and also game winning in this game. Easily. I mean, very good uh, attack here from Mordor, but the thing is, he will get now be, you know, be sniped from those Rangers. And no heroes. There is a Lone Tower with the Ranger inside. And Ave has not the power points to repair it. The Lone Tower is way tankier than a normal Battle Tower you can build. But against this many units at the same time, maybe in this situation it's good for rebuild, guys. I'm telling you. Now you gotta go for rebuild. Yeah, smart move from Ave. Smart move. That's actually gonna be a good situation to save the tower. I mean, whenever you have to use 5 power point to save a 15, uh, to save a 10 power point, I think it's worth it. The Gondor Knight's just in time. I think that should be enough to save the day. Or it's going to be close, but I think Gondor Knights got this. Yes, sir. Like, he saved this, and he cleared in exchange, like, lots of units. So he got, he invested five power points, but the five power points got them power points back. Like, that's the one trait you are looking for. You want to use power points to earn more power points. The more power points you have, the better it is. Gondor Knights and Pikemen, War Chanted, or Rallying Cold, they are going for attack. 500 command points for men, and we have in total 625 for Mordor, but he has not many units on the field. So he needs some Easterlings to deal with the Gondor Knights. With the buff of the, you know, Rallying Coal, they will hit like a truck and also destroy your slaughterhouses in a few seconds. This one is the most important and valuable one. Not only it's level 2, but also it has industry on it. So keeping this one protected should be the main goal of Smoky. The problem is, a Fel Beast in this situation wouldn't be even a good choice. Because first of all, Firian Deal is not a big map. That's the one thing. And second thing is, he has just too many ranges on the field. And for that reason, I think Black Riders can be a good choice. Again, money is a problem. And also Catapults can be a nice choice. Like, again, somebody who's spamming Archers, you can punish him with Catapults. The Builder! Okay, nice. Oh, that was close! Warchant! And Gondor Knights are getting away. That was actually nice, very close to save the Builder, but also very smart move from Avi to kind of beat off the Warchant and disengage. Now, oh, but that's a mistake from Avi. What is he doing with the Rangers? Oh, they are not even getting one shot. What? They are not getting one shotted in the aggressive stance. They were also. Okay, the commitment now against the tower. He knows rebuild is on cooldown. He will be able to finish it off, finish it off now. The rangers are gonna be you know defenseless. They will be taken down almost entirely the second they enter the battlefield. And Lone Tower is no more. So he's pushing from the bottom, but he will be giving up a level 2 slaughterhouse for no reason. There is zero defense. He's fully committed on this one in the front. Yes, it's giving him a lot of money and cash, but. You need more than that to actually win this game. And we have not seen a... Oh, there we go. That's the hero I wanted to see, actually. I think that's a very good investment from Mordor. And, you know, what you can do is you can... I mean, this this hero is scaling too, right? It's like a very hard scaling hero. Very underrated. Like, he has very strong early spike with the opt level 4, which is not hard to get for Mouth of Sauron. With level 7, you chunk everything. We have seen this attack 
also against Drogov. It was chunking him for 90% of his HP, by the way. It's like the Easter Light from Gandalf, but it feels even stronger. I've seen the other day also Easter Light from Gandalf against the Drogov. It was not hitting that hard. So this thing actually hits very hard. And then with level 10, you can make, you know, make them fight against each other. So a hero with three spikes, four, seven, and 10, is a very great investment. The farm is going to be taken down. There is no defense. It's a back and forth game, boys. He's getting dismounted uh, to deal with the Rohan Spearman. And also later on, he can be mounted to keep chasing and catching the enemy Gondonites. And keep doing this all game long until you get more and more levels. Okay. 625 command points versus 625 command points. It's dead even. But look at the power point differential. You know, 12 power points for Ave and only 9 power points for Smoky. So Ave is going to be the first one who's going to get to the 15. And now the final transition has been made into the infantry. So Tower Guards, Ranger, that's the strongest infantry Man of the West faction can offer. You can't get stronger than that. But Mordor can get way stronger than he currently is. So basically... Now you have a momentum, that's what I'm trying to say as men. Now you are as strong as you can be and way stronger than Mordor. Now is your time to shine. Before Mordor gets stronger and stronger and stronger. With more levels on this guy, you know, with more heroes, maybe even some Haradrim archers later on, maybe some Drummer Trolls or, you know, the Black Riders. So Mordor can get infinitely stronger. But men can't really get to that. I mean, the only thing he can do is recruit some Knights of the Ramroth and that's it, right? Okay, so Gondonites are trying to get here, but there, is, there are too many units. Smart move from Smoky, using Tainted Land in a spot, and making sure to maintain the buff from the 50% damage and armor. Pretty similar to the War Chant. 14 power points against 12, almost 12. 725 for Mordor and 800 for Man. This might be one of the games which we might be able to see a late game. I have not seen in the version 8.5 a late game matchup yet between Man and Mordor. I would be really happy to see that to see the full strength of these two factions in late game. I mean, the problem is, Avi going for a spam of infantry. He's not investing any money into the heroes. And heroes are a great investment for a longer game. So the longer the game goes on, the better the heroes are going to be. And once again, he's leaving those wide open. Gondor goes for it, and Rohan will answer. Master the Rohirrim. The Rohirrim special summon will be used. The fortress might be under threat, but he's gonna make sure to destroy the slaughterhouse level 3 first. The Easterlings, though, they are smashing those Rohan special summon. If he can take this down, it's good, but is it really worth it to invest 15 power points to just kill one level 3 slaughterhouse? I mean, to be fair, this has like an uh, industry buff on it, so it's way more than that. Now, for Sauron, in the meantime, is trying to deal some damage to the Rangers, but he might be in trap situation there are tower guards if they touch him he will go down in a few seconds i will be used you see a lone a long shot oh the arrow volley was used actually from smoky and wiped out the entire infantry army from avi but that's one of those things so basically it was a defensive usage of the arrow volley right it's a 10 power point once again from mordor and look at the power point now he is not even close to be picking the 15 yet and avi in the meantime is like what 16 away from his 25 which can be the earthquake, and look at this layout, you know? It can deal devastating amount of damage to the Mordor. But Avi was able to, not, not able to destroy this yet. There are some tower guards, they are quite tanky, even against catapults. The level 2 slaughterhouse is going to be taken down. Unfortunately, you get nothing for killing those summoned units, but you cannot ignore them either. So they will have still some time to destroy this one, I believe. And no heroes all game long, but we have a stable level 3 for the knights of Dol Amroth. In the meantime, we have also a level 3 Siege Warwick. So we will see a situation of the lead game elite unit from Mordor versus Man. The Knights of Dolamroth versus the Black Riders. The problem is that Easterlings are near, not nearly as you know, powerful or you know, strong as the Tower Guards are. Tower Guards are just much, much better and they should have like much easier time dealing with the Black Riders than the Easterlings dealing with the Knights of Dolamroth. Level 4 unlocked, the debuff is available, the Lone Tower is under attack, but he has rebuilt on cooldown, he cannot save this. The, the ranges, I mean the Tower Guards are going down, the tower is going to be destroyed, there is nothing that can save him, and this guy is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. But look at the command points, 900 command points available for men, and 625 for Mordor. So basically, as he summoned the Rohirrim, he was also using the momentum to expand, he has also Grand Harvest now on his farms, as you can see them glowing. And every single one of them is going to give you 15% more money. That's definitely a much, much better game than we have seen in the previous two games.
Hey, Gulliver. Glad to see you in the chat. Okay, boys. So, 14 power points. He's only 11 away from his 25. That's crazy because, you know, Smokey is still 5 away from his 15. Power guards are looking so damn sexy, boys. Look at them. They have the big shields, you know? 10 power points in the bank. Mouth of Sauron has to be careful. Get mounted and get out. Get mounted and get out. The well is going to be taken down by the orcs. Um, Mortor is defending this one, though, but it's really badly damaged now. All it takes is the knights touch touching it one single time. It's going to be gone. He's trying to recruit the Black Riders, but imagine if the Knights of Dolamroth can get inside the jeans and take it out before the Black Rider could make it on the field. It's a huge investment for Mordor to build a Siege Works and get it all the way to level 3 and then invest 2,000 on top of that to recruit the best elite unit in the game, by the way. The best by far. That's why you're only able to recruit one of them at the same time. One Black Rider is allowed at the same time. And there they come. The elite unit from the Mordor faction. Debuff has been used from Mouth of Sauron, but Mordor is surrounded. You can see the minimap with your own eyes. So, man, he's expanding, right? He has, like, lots of stuff at the bottom side, lots of stuff in the middle, and also top side. He's up to 1,000 command points. So, basically, you know, all he needs to do is destroy the one single area of Mordor, which is, like, this tiny, and then you are victorious. And with the 25, which you will get in 5 power points from now, it will be definitely possible. Okay, in the meantime, Mordor is up to 12. So with, 12, with 15, you have a couple of options. Call me crazy, but I think even Darkness could be a nice choice here. Because, me, uh, never mind, the Worm, I think the Worm is going to be still a bad, very good choice. There are too many level 3 farms. If you can take this and this one down, the Worm can be already a big achievement. But we shall see what he's going to go for. A 14 power points almost. And man is getting closer, boys. At this point, he's building towers too. I mean, just why not? He has fire arrows on the rangers. I mean, he has money. The only thing what kind of <laughs> bothers me a little bit is him not investing any money into, you know, into heroes. That's the problem. He, oh, he went for the cloud break. To, the, the only reason why he did that is to deal with this Black Riders. I'm telling you guys. The only reason why he did that so that's gonna be good. Maybe you can take them out. But is it really worth it? When you were so close, you was like five power points away from the 25. Is it really worth it to use it now on to kill only one single battalion? The worm. The build can be used to save the level 3 steeple. The cloud break. And now the commitment. It's gonna last like for 10 seconds. Mouth of Sauron has to be careful. Do not lose him as well. Get, get out. Get out. Get out there. Get out there. Don't sacrifice him though. Don't sacrifice him though. Why is he standing? He's not stunned. Move, move, move. Now they can move. Move this way. Move this way. Like, why would you lose everything like this? He's committing. He could get away here. Trust me on that one. He could get away, right? But he doesn't. He doesn't. And he loses even his mouth of Sauron for no reason. In the meantime, big commitment. Big commitment. The level 3 farm has been finally taken down. The commitment on the fortress. The fire arrows are hitting, but they are not hitting very hard. The catapult is going to be taken down first from the rangers. And there are many, many tower guards upon the field. The, the Black Riders are gone. Mouth of Sauron is gone. I think that's the moment we will call it GG. Because Mordor is still so far away from his 25. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Even though he used Cloud Break to deal with the Knights and with the Black Riders, he is still up to 10 power points. <laughs> Loves and thanks for the, for the three months, my man. Lofsen just resubscribed for three months. Ahoy, inside the jeans. Thank you, thank you. Inside the jeans indeed, my man. Thank you for the huge support to the channel. Appreciate it. Means a lot. Okay. Oh boy, Smokey. Smokey? Has no more dodge available, and after this game, the score is going to be 0-3. He's going to be three games behind his opponent. And he can only lose one more. He can only lose one more. He has to start winning games now. If Smokey cannot pull some magical trick from his magical head. We have the blue Man of the West player Mr. Smoke on the left side versus the red Goblin player Ave Havi on the right side. Mering Stream is not the biggest map in the world. And goblins, they usually like to be on a big map. And uh, Duke, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Hope you're going to enjoy your stay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, the music is from Age of Asian Mythology because it's my second most favorite uh, RTS game. <laughs> I also like this a lot. Two tunnels into the spider pit. On the other side, we see one farm into the early barracks from Smokey into the second farm. So it's going to be a spidering opening, which is not bad. I mean, spiderlings are great for harassment. But if you are asking about the game, uh, the game itself is definitely not Age of Mythology. It's actually Battle for Middle Earth. To the Rise of the Witch King. Glutoys, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. The music doesn't belong to the scheme, does it? No. I'm actually using custom music. <laughs> Not the game music. Spiderlings opening. Because the game music itself is copyrighted. So basically, there is like a lot of stuff going on on Twitch. If you are listening to copyrighted music, from a, even when it's from a game, there is a chance you might actually lose your account. They might ban you for this. So for that reason, I'm not allowed to use the in-game music. And I need to make like a separate playlist, which is playing while... They are playing this game. Spiderlings opening, soldiers opening. The soldiers are still strong enough to actually, you know, win against spiderlings with the rallying call. And spiderlings, they can creep first of all. I like this a lot. Creeping with the spiderlings first, the spy the work layer will get them to level two, which will negate the effect of the weakness of the evil factions. But in exchange, he will have to give up a tunnel. And spider link. No Goblin Cave yet. It's going to be changed now. Rallying Call has been used on the soldiers. They will be able to burst down this tunnel. They will nearly get level 2 after this one. So now they can move on to the second tunnel and destroy that too. The Spiderlings, they need to use Warchant if they want to be able to fight against that. He's going to use Warchant now. One of them is going to finish off the creep. And the other one is going to be used for defense. Avi is pinging this. I don't know why he's pinging that. I don't know. I have no clue. Spiderlings are trying to body block. Uh, soldiers are trying to get inside the range to attack the tunnel, but what they should be doing instead is to fight this. Because I don't think you can ignore them and take down this tunnel. You can actually kind of fight here in this location. Because he was also tanking now the fortress for no reason. It is Age of Mythology beta. <laughs> Dude, Age of Mythology is also one of these games which deserves much more love than it actually gets. I don't know, man. Those RTS games, you know, my most favorite RTS games, I'm very, very unlucky. I used to play only games which are very un not popular, you know what I'm saying? And Age of Mythology is one of them. It was one of the first RTS games or one of the video games I've actually played uh, many, many years ago when I was like, what, 14 years old, 15 years old. He's creeping. Uh, he was also able to uh, defend this tunnel. That's very important. And Smokey was also, um, Avi was also creeping. Now the turn for him to attack. But remember the Warchant and also Rylan Call is both on cooldown. That means no more buff available for the next two minutes. Archers are a great counter, but they gotta keep the distance. You don't wanna be in melee range. In melee range, everything can crash you. Now those Spiderlings, they are only level one and they will take a lot of damage from the Archers. There is another one, just shoot him down, which might be enough to finish him off. Spiderlings, they are weak against Archers like crazy. Leave one Spiderling alive and the wolf are, the sheep are never safe. Looks like he wanna creep this too. With the Rohan Spearman units. He should be able to. Nice micro from Smoky. Beat him off. And then the second he wanna go back to the lair, he will be vulnerable. He won't attack you back, but the builder should be getting in safety by building a wall up. And now with the spiderlings, he is not able to achieve too much, but he keeps uh, Smoky in a check situation, which will give Avery a chance to recover. Eventually get the spider pit to level two to recruit some spider riders, or you can also build a fissure for the half throw swordman. Outlaws Wardmen are much, much stronger than the Gondor soldiers, so you can definitely out damage them. Smoky needs also Rangers later on. And also against goblins, heroes like, I think, you know, Elma can be a nice choice. You can keep chasing down those Spiderlings all the time. Maybe Gondor Knights can be nice. Maybe Boromir can be nice. But it looks like these players, they don't like to recruit any heroes. So we have not seen many heroes in these three games yet. The only hero we have seen was in the last game, Mouth of Sauron. We have not seen a single hero in any other game so far. Oh, nice commitment with the Spiderlings. The farm is going to be bursted down. Because perfect timing, pretty much. Like, look at this. He's surrounding him with Goblins and Spiderlings. And the Spiderlings have the chance to engage, deal damage. And then also, after doing that, you can always go back and defend with them. Because that's the mobility advantage you got. Oh, archery range. Oof, that's gonna be painful. His command points kept now. He cannot recruit any more units. Smokey has to make a call. He has to make a choice. But it looks like he wanna keep going. He wanna keep going. He's ignoring this army, trying to take his production buildings. He will lose a lot. 
by trying to do this. He will be losing the archer range, the farm, and the barracks right after. His command points kept. He cannot recruit any more units as we are talking. The spiderlings can deal devastating amount of damage to the men of the West player. It's the loser's bracket, finals. Okay, the barracks is going down. No more production building available for Ukraine. Uh, but it's going to use rebuild. This is going to be enough to buy you enough time. But the spiderlings are still chunking it. Big time. We get more and more goblin warriors. Now the question is, is this damage? Smokey will be able to deal in exchange. Equally strong as the damage he's receiving now. Because look at the builder. You see this? There is a tunnel. There is a tunnel. There is a tunnel. There is a tunnel. So he's going to be able to expand offensively. Which means his command points are going to still look good. And also, if even if that's not going to be the case. Goblins have no trouble. You know, kind of expanding the command points by just investing 200, you will be able to build multiple barrow expansions, and every single one of them means plus 75 command points. And for that reason, we have 500 command points for goblins and 400 command points for Smokey. Smokey has only a stable, that's all he got. He has no units to defend himself with. He's gonna lose everything over and over again. And oh, he's coming back with the archers. The level 2 farm will be still taken down. The archers, very smart move from Smokey though, Ex you know. Is engaging with the archers because they don't deal damage to them to the buildings anyway. This tunnel is gonna be in a safe spot, but he's looking for for more tunnels. There is another one, the builder. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts. He needed that. He needed that. I think he has only one builder. Yes. Ah, that's pain. That's painful though. That's really painful. I mean, that's a lot of damage. Child, you have the first hero from Goblins. It's Azog. Azog is here. The Goblin Town. Down, down to Goblin Town. Down, down to Goblin Town. I mean, to be fair, he has not really big counter to this Gondor Knights yet. Because he lost the Spider Pit too, right? He has, all, he has zero production buildings as we are talking. Like, when he loses the couple of units he has on the field. And he has like, what, one Corsair coming from the inn? And what, one Spider Link? That's all he got. If he loses these units, he has literally no units on the field. That's why he needs production buildings. And I don't think that Goblins at this stage of the game can do a lot of stuff for you, right? We need some sort of counter to the Gundam Knights. I mean, he has, I, I think it back. He has actually still two, three Spiderlings upon the field. Spider Allies was kind of used, but it won't achieve really too much for, for Goblins. They are actually taking a lot of damage from the Archers. The tunnel is going to be taken down. And, I mean, it's not horrible for Smokey. But again, Smokey making the same mistake like in the previous game. He's investing all the five power points. Heal, rebuild, and rallying call. And... Goblins, they are more strict in terms of the power point usage. They go for the 5 war chance and then 10 into the spider allies right after that. So again, the longer the game goes on, the more advantage Abi will get of that reason. Look, this build is so fast. Two power points in the bank. Corsair coming from the inn, by the way, if you're wondering. They are also cheaper. So everything that you can capture or recruit from the inn is cheaper than the original price. For example, Black Orcs, they, they cost 250 inside the um, inn, they cost 300 inside the Orc Pit. Three power points collected after the Spider Allies. On the other side, we have two power points for men. What about the two Felbies in the first map? Yeah, true, true. I, dude, <laughs> I forgot about them. The two Felbies, I don't, I, you know, they are, not, they are like no heroes for me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. I mean, he's building a well now for the recovery, but this is going to slow down the game and that's going to favor once again the goblins. Now he has the chance to keep expanding, to keep building tunnels offensively. Those spiderlings, they never stop. They never linger. They keep dealing economical damage to Smok from the minute one until until now. They don't stop. And to be honest, also we got to give credits to Ave Habe. He was doing a phenomenal job keeping those spiderlings alive throughout the entire game. He was creeping with them. He was harassing with them. He was defending with them. I mean, no matter what's going to happen in this game, I think Spiderlings are the MVP. 375 command points versus 600. It's not looking good for Smokey, guys. And you got to understand, you know, being if he loses that game, he will be 4-0 behind. That means Avi will need only one more win. And Avi has still a dodge of readable too. So keep this please in mind. So Avi can still dodge a matchup if he doesn't feel comfortable playing the matchup. And Smokey can't. He already used the dodge. Azok is coming. Level three, level almost three. Level four is gonna unlock the great battle rage, which will make him hit like an absolute track. He's gonna be one of the most strongest heroes in a one-on-one -on -one situation. 
because it gives you also armor, right? That's like, for me, it's better than the Carnage from Lourdes, because it also gives you armor. Lourdes' Carnage gives also armor, but not that much. The farm is going to be taken down. The firebombs, though. Nice firebombs. Look at this. Demolishing archers. He's going to use heal even on the spot. Nah, it's not the heal from the ability. It's from the well, actually. And, yeah, look at this. Would you look at that, boys? Tunnels Fiesta. Tunnel Fiesta is okay. He's almost level 4. He's still good. He doesn't need to be worried. He's also healing up quite fast, though, out of combat. The tunnel is going to be taken down. We get, we get also more Corsairs with Firebombs. The Builder, maybe take down the build if you can, but the Spiderlings are also annoying to deal with. So now, that's what we call a snowballing faction, right? The second you get a lead with Goblins, you can do the same thing, but you can also do with Dwarves. So keep building offensive tunnels. Surround your opening with tunnels around him and keep pressuring him all the time, put him in jail, put him in prison, and never give him the chance to get out. And during all this time, you can expand freely, get more and more command points, you can get all the way to 1000, get a huge lead, you can get some stronger units later on, maybe Fissure, yes sir, half throw Swordman action, you can go even for upgrades, like I'm telling you, if you get the chance to buy scavenge armor on those half throw Swordman, hallelujah boys, this is... This is really, really good. Like, they are so tanky then, you know? They can tank everything. Look, Azok. Use great battle rage. I mean, he can always get away. This guy is fast, you know? He's so fast. Would... Oh. Oh, ho, ho. Goblins. Down, down to Goblin Town. Azok coming, you know, getting in here. Coming from here, you know? <laughs> Teleporting. Moving and walking is overrated. And there comes a 10 power point summon from men. It's going to be a Tom Bombadillo special summon. However, I believe um, the um, Lone Tower would be a better choice. I believe. Because there is so much pressure on you that a Lone Tower, maybe on, I don't know, like here, could be a better choice. Oh, that was really close, boys. The farm barely survived. It's a almost level 3 farm, so keeping this alive is very important. It would be dropping down to 350 command points only. So, just so you know, 200 is the least amount. You cannot have less than 200 if your fortress is still remaining on the field. In the meantime, I mean, the thing is, also goblins have not a single level 2 tunnel, but that's okay because he has multiple tunnels all around the map. Azok is getting inside the jeans and will be eventually coming out from this location to defend against this army. 13 power points collected after the spiders. He's like 2 power points away from his Vacha. Vacha can be used to wipe out a full army. And look at this, he's 2 power points away from his 15, and Smokey is still 10 power points away from his 15. So that's a huge differential, which wouldn't be the case if he wouldn't pick up the rebuild and the heal, you know? half Thrust Wardman, Corsairs, now we have the transition into stronger units from the Goblin Town. In the meantime, Man is kind of clearing up all these offensive tunnels from Goblins, that's pretty good. And also, Ave is losing a lot of momentum, he's gonna drop down to 500 command points, as this one is gonna be eventually taken down. The army from men is disengaging, but running away from the goblins is easier said than done, because goblins are the fastest infantry units in the entire game. I mean, Avi is playing out of his mind. Yes. We have a new video, I mean, uh, for this one. You can actually take a look into that. Uh, Balindru was just linking you. 15 power points, boys. 15 power points. The spider allies summon for the second time into the war chant. Now we have also half throw pikemen, marauders upon the field. The tunnel is going to be even saved. Looks like the soldiers not going to be able to finish this quite yet. Or actually, I take it back. They finished it. Very good. But dude, this army, look at this army now. It's going to be a magical trick because you will see it now, but in a few seconds, you won't be able to see it. Oh, he's going to go for the worm summon. Okay. The worm can also deal a lot of structural damage. But also can be used at the same time to actually deal with the units. Look at this. You can burn them. Burn them. You know, like the Mad King from Game of Thrones. Burn them all. Burn them all. <laughs> 550 command points for goblins, 500 for men. But he loses. He will lose this one. There is no chance he can save this one to the worm. The worm will be finishing off this one for sure. Rebuild is on cooldown. I think it's available though, right? Um, but even when it's available, you cannot save this. The worm is hitting very hard. It's going to burn the archer range now. Actually, it was a bad move, in my opinion. What is Theodin King doing? He's, he's gonna... What? Is he using Rebuild to save this? this is the end. Oh, Theodin King got killed. Heal delay. Heal lag. 
Azok, I'm telling you, hitting extremely hard. Gondon Ice, they shouldn't let him escape, by the way. Just chase him down and finish him off. You cannot let him escape like this. He's level 6, by the way. He has now the Team the Beast, or the Crack the Whip, to give experience to the Spider Riders. And even with the Rebuild, he end up losing the Archer Range level 2. And the Worm, I'm telling you, dealing crazy amount of damage to the structures. And yeah, I mean, he's up to 600 command points. But one of the main reasons for that is this level 3 farm, which is 100% damage. So all Ave has to do is touch it a couple of times, it's gone. And then Smoky is going to lose 100 command points in total. So there comes the counter commitment with one Ranger, one Archer, Gondor Archer, and two Spearmen. I, I don't think it's going to be very effective. But we shall see. No more Rangers anytime soon. He has a couple of Gondonites, but they are both badly damaged. There is only one single Ranger against two half draw Swordmen, Spider Links, Goblins, and half draw Pikemen. So his only bet is 15. The thing is, if he can get 15 anytime soon, I think he can call the Rohirrim, right? Oh, he's going for the Lone Tower. And Smoky does it again. I think the level 3 final tower is going to be able to defend himself against goblins, but not against spiderlings. That's why you gotta help it out with the Gondonites. I think this the tower, I mean, every building is shooting when it's level 3. And look at this, it's tankier too, and the spiderlings cannot finish it off. Tower will be summoned offensively, actually. Is he out of his mind? Like, how is this tower supposed to be surviving this in long terms? The after all, Swartman are dealing too much damage. Rallying call on the range inside the tower. The Smoky is like, he's going nuts. Tainted land, look to commitment to one single lone tower. The half throw pikemen are tanky, but the second they are gone, the goblins they should be getting one-shotted from the rangers. It's gonna be close, but the rebuild is on cooldown. It's safe for now, it's safe for now. But the thing is, let's be real, you know, Ave doesn't need to care about this, to be honest with you. This location isn't threatening for Ave. I mean, I am always impressed by the fact that if people see towers, they have always the intention, oh, I have to destroy this tower, oh, I have to take it down. Why? There is no reason. In a spot like this, you can ignore this, right? Until you can definitely take it down. Look, look how much pressure this is creating. I mean, it's going to be taken down now to the half of the man. There is no way you can survive this. It's just too low. You know, the goblins are getting one-shotted, but the second the half of the Swartman are going to get inside the range, Oh my goodness. Oh, it's going to be still gone. It cannot be trampled down, by the way. That's not possible. But Azog is here. Dude, this tower is actually... Dude, I take it back, man. This tower actually dealt a lot of damage, man. That's crazy. He will be casting the long, long shot before he goes down. Misses it, of course. Lands on nothing. But let's be real. The tower was actually giving Smokey a lot of time. I mean, that's good. He's at 575 command points now. Tom Bombadil is available for the second time. And on the other side, we have three power points after the key pets, Warchant, and also Spiders and Worm in Tainted Land. So actually, him going for the tower was kind of forcing Avid to pick up the Tainted Land. So it's like 5 to 10, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Alright, but what do you want to do about this Ezok? How you want to kill him? That's the big question. He's so tanky. He's so tanky. He's full, hate, full HP. How you want to deal with him? He's almost level 7 too. Like, you cannot really burst him down. That's not possible. Does he have rebuilds? Uh, yes, almost. But I think the level 3 farm is not going to make it out this time. We have also tower guards upon the field. Charge is coming in clash from the, from the tower guards, uh, from the half throw swordman. And look at this damage, boys. Tom Bombadil will be special summon. Tom Bombadil can also be an anti-hero ability to knock down Azok on the field, on the ground all the time. But losing this is painful. Look, Smokey is dropping down to 450 in his command points cap as we are talking. No more command points. Azok can keep going and the second you want to fight against him, he can just turn and use the Great Battle Rage and take all your knights. Look him, look him. Bam. Bam. <laughs> Plus 10. He has also pillage. I mean, Tom Bombadil cannot chase him though. Okay. Hey, Yoda, welcome. Glad to see you in the chat. 13 power points collected after the tower. So he's two power points away from his 15. And we have eight power points after the worm. And the spider allies can be used for the third time. I mean, this game is lasting for a while, but I have the feeling that Smokey was behind pretty much since the minute number one. So he's the defending player. There are like some super rare situations in which Smokey is able to go for a counter attack. But most of the time, he's like in the defensive formation. And defending all alone is not going to get you W. 
Yes, finally Boromir on the field. But what can Boromir do in, in this situation? Whenever Azok want to kill him, he will kill him. Like Azok, just chase him down. Azok is faster than Boromir. And with the great battle rage, you can out damage him. Spider Eyes will be summoned now for the third time. Half throw Swordman, half throw Pikeman. There is one single wall expansion. That's all Smoky God. While Inkolis can abuse defensively. There are also goblins coming from the middle. Azok is gonna teleport once again. Boromir has to retreat. He has only one single ranger. And Archer range just got once again to level 2. The spiders, they are hitting very hard. But Repair is now available to save eventually the stable, the archer range, or any of these farms. But every single farm is only level 1. So using Rebuild to save a level 1 farm doesn't really seem to be worth it. And in the meantime, take a look into the minimap, guys. The inn here looks like he's creeping the trolley at the same time at the bottom side. Multiple tunnels. You know, look at this. Almost level 2, almost level 2, level 2, almost level 3. Level 2, almost level 3. So, long story short, goblins are going to be very soon at over 800 command points. Very, very soon. In about 30 seconds. He's committing against the fortress, which is definitely a mistake. You cannot take it down that easily, especially against factions like men and dwarves. I don't think it's a good idea <clears throat> because he can use rebuild and you will end up losing lots of units for no reason. And we have the Rohan special summon that was just used. Um, here around this side, but I mean, I don't know if this is the right call to use the Rohan special summon it. Like, you might be able to what? Destroy two Tritanas, but is it really worth it, you know? Borom is level 2 now. I mean, maybe if you can get him level 5 for the leadership, that's gonna be nice. But not for now. The Rohirrim summon is a 15 power point, and it feels like it's gonna be blown away for no reason. I was expecting him to commit against the fortress. You know, with the Rohirrim summon, and the thing is, if you have actually Rallying Coal available, you use Rohirrim, Rallying Coal, and then you have ideally even, you know, Elma for leadership. So you have double buffed Rohirrim army surrounding the fortress, and you can take it on quite fast. So the way he used it is just not worth it, in my opinion. But killing three, four, even four level one tunnels for a 15 power point. Tell me, you guys tell me in the chat, is it really worth it? There's a tower coming up in the middle at, the, at this little island. And we have Lone Tower summon available for the second time. Again, he might still put the ranges inside. And Horn of Condor can stun them. Horn of Condor is very powerful and there is no fear resistance for the Goblin Town. So basically, you gotta get um, Skull Totem from the Gorkil the Goblin King. And Gorkil the Goblin King is like a very situational hero, super rare. And he doesn't happen often, let's say often. He's oh, one more hit him, dude. This guy is fast and furious. Holy quackamole, he's fast. Now you gotta stun him. Now you gotta stun him. Stun and long shot. Where is the stun from Boromir? Did he use it? Where is Boromir? Is he dead? Dude, that's the latest stun if I've ever seen one. He has to go now for the arrow volley because he lost the rangers. Arrow volley is hitting very hard, but the half throw pikeman. They don't even die. That's how tanky they are. In the whole ground stands. Without heavy armor. Boromir is hitting level 4. Heston King's Fever, or the Captain of Gondor, which can level up those ranges to level 2 to unlock their long shot. The thing is, those spiderlings, they are from the beginning of the game. Avi was, you know, keeping them alive for all game long. And if you don't know, level 5 is the max level in this game, first of all. And second thing is, if you are level 5, you are automatically immune to fears. So not even Boromir can stop those you know, spider links anymore. 450 command points for men, and we have 775 command Gondor. points. Freddy boy, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. And 22 power points, boys. He doesn't need the drag off. He actually needs the big dragon. That's what he needs. The worm for the second time. This game actually lasts a while, but once again, Smoky in a very defensive formation throughout the entire game, defending, 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 barely able to get a lead, and couple of mistakes, like at this gameplay skill level, mistakes are much more punishing, right? When you make a mistake against players like Avi or Smoky or Sauron, you will get punished for it. And I think the 15 power point Rohirrim summon in my book was not the greatest call of all time. It was just not enough to get him back into the game. Oh my goodness, the worm, <laughs> the burn animation from the rangers is saying no. Uh, did he lose Azok? I think he did lose Azok or something. That's why he's saying no. 
27 power points in the bank. Ave is playing out of his mind. Farami is trying to show his quality. Level 3. And Smoky is at 5 power points. He has Tom Bombadil. Yes, but what can Tom Bombadil do against this reckless seed? Azok? And he didn't even lose Azok. What? What did he say no for? And there comes the Golden Dragon, boys. The Golden Goblin Dragon. And he's looking to roll some Boromirs. Boromirs, thank you. He will fight until the end. What an absolute fiesta game, boys. What an absolute fiesta game. And very unfortunate series so far for Smoky. I mean, it's going to be 4 0 after this game. And Ave legit need only one more win to get as a 5 0 leader of the losers' finals into the grand finals against Sauron. And that's going to happen eventually Friday or Saturday if Ave wins one more game after this one. I mean, Smoky has to go over, you know, level over 9,000 in order to pull this off. So, Dragon was able to destroy. I mean, to be fair, the Dragon wasn't very impactful because there is not much stuff to be destroyed anymore. <laughs> like, he has not even a production building. He has like one, two farms. That's all he got. There is one here at the top side. There is one here. And this one is going to be taken down with one shot. So he's dropping down to 350 command points. Yeah. So farm... In a farm. Yes, that is awesome one. So 200, 250, 300, 350. <laughs> and goblins are up to what? 1,000? Yes, sir. Azok is coming, boys. The commitment. The commitment. Now the surrounding. He knows rebuild is on cooldown. But... Do -do 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 oh, the stun. Dude, I'm talking, I'm telling you guys, why not Boromir more often? Look how impactful he is in those situations. He's not even that expensive. I think Boromir is very underrated and should be definitely used way more often. Definitely. The level 2 farm is going to be taken down. The half throw sword pikemen, marauders are actually hitting very hard. Proto begins the last hope. And Ezog, though, dies to Peregrine. Green Took. You full of a took. You've taken down my goblin hero from the Hobbit films. Thorin is supposed to do that, it's not you. I will represent the men of Gondor. I will represent the men of Gondor. And I can sort of follow appreciate it. Hope you can enjoy your stay. Ah! GG well played, guys. It was a nice game, though. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think Smokey had some momentums, but they were they were really, really short piece, you know, like, like maybe 30 seconds. And then, I don't know. I played really good, though. He was super aggressive, you know, putting lots of pressure on Smokey. Forcing him. Oh my! The Vinks here. The release the boiling oil. <laughs> By the way, this also is super underrated, guys. Look at this cooldown. Do you see this? This is like 30 seconds cooldown, my man. You can use it so many times. He's gonna use it again. Legit in one fight. During one defense, he's gonna be able to use it twice. I'm telling you, there is so much underrated stuff going on in Rise of the Witch King. People are not using this, for example. Look at this. Look at this, please. Now watch this. Do it. Watch this. Do, do you see this, boys? Do you see how impactful this thing actually is? It kills all the melee attackers to one-shot them. I'm telling you. This is so underrated. And look at this cooldown. What the heck is this? Why people are not using it? I, I don't understand. <laughs> I'm, I'm just genuinely curious. Like, if there is, like, that's gonna force legit your opponent to recruit some siege weapons because your melee attackers are gonna be completely useless against that. <laughs> He's like, oh my goodness, leave. <laughs> so, boiling oil OP, maybe. <laughs> it's like 30 seconds cooldown, this thing. <laughs> he used it three times already. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's also saying such an absurd cooldown. Yeah, it's true. He can use it again, guys. That's crazy. That's crazy. Connie is welcome. Glad to see you in the chat. He's gonna use it again. <laughs> he's gonna force Ave to actually, uh, you know, recruit some cave trolls or mountain giants. You know, that's what that's gonna be the thing he has to do. And he's gonna use it again. No, he's gonna use the arrow volley this time. What a defense, my man. What a defense, dude. The defense is crazy. I'm telling you. There is a builder, guys. I believe in comebacks. Smokey has... 
Smoky has 285 in the bank, has zero command points, but he has 250 available command points. He's getting 18 from this farm. So in calculation, if Avi now leaves his keyboard and does legit nothing for like 20 minutes, I think Smoky can legit win this game. You know, he has the Rohan special summon as well. Look at this. Look at this. Tan uh, Fissure here offensively. You know, he's building towers, <laughs> lumber mills, you know, all this good stuff. Smokey doesn't give up. This guy is like fighting. He's like a warrior, you know. He's gonna make a builder and build another farm. I mean, at this point of the game, I think either Avi has to leave the game for like 30 minutes or uh, Avi has to, leave has, has to lose connection, you know. That's the only thing. <laughs> Alright, the commitment now against the fortress, the gift troll against the Rohirrim. Oh, heal. Oh, the red pants. It's like Christmas time, boys. He's ready to hit like a truck. Hey, yeah, yeah, he's celebrating. Look, ah, ooh, ah, it's coming. And that's it. He's gone. The Rohirrim, though. Brief warriors of Middle Earth. Oh, he actually increases command points by 30%, guys. Now by 35%. 350 command points but unfortunately he has zero units on the field every single money he has he's you know investing into building more farms <laughs> smoky is trying to this you know like this courage is open it it's like a mind scheme you know the thing is you cannot commit when i'm telling you one thing if you guys have this ability on your fortress there is i think nothing a melee fighter can do against your fortress not even a, not even a joke like your fortress is going to be immune to melee attackers you will be able to roast them every single time every single time he got rebuilt as well yes <laughs> yeah you can use it as well you know just to rebuild it but you know at this point you see one two three four cave trolls who let the trolls out okay let's go I want to see this. I want to see this if this is going to be enough to finish off this fortress. I mean, it should be because the fortress is not even a tower. It's not even a tower, but it's rebuilding itself. Look at this. Two workers are three workers, boys. Holy four workers. You see these workers. One, two, three, four workers are repairing. They're like, gotta rebuild it. Gotta rebuild it. Hold the gate. Hold the door. Tom Bombadil. Power points. The farm has been taken down, though, unfortunately. Goblins. I mean,. <laughs> what is going on here? It's unbelievable. I think it's a perfect moment for me to just put on the camera like this and go go to P. So I will be there for the next game, you know? So I think that's a perfect moment. I'll be right back like in two minutes, guys. I mean, to be fair, on the map, jungles of Farharat, you have like plenty of options with the Goblin Faction. It's like a perfect map for the Goblin Faction, but it's still a very difficult matchup for Goblins in long terms. We have the Red Goblin player, Avi Havi at the top side, versus the Blue Engmar player, Mr. Smok at the bottom side. Early Hall of the Kingsman is coming up after the first mill, and we have two tunnel opening for Goblins. So Avi is playing out of his mind. And the only player who was able to beat Avi so far in this tournament was actually Sauron. So Sauron was able to beat Ave and also Smoky. So regardless who's gonna win this, it's going to be a rematch in the Grand Finals for the number one spot. But keep in mind that Sauron has to be defeated twice in the best of nine. So let's assume that Ave wins the series against Smoky, moves on to the Grand Finals. I mean, basically he has to win the first best of nine and the bracket is gonna be resetted and then he gotta win another best of nine in order to become the champion of the spring tournament. But even if Smokey loses that, he's gonna be the third spot and he will still get $150 cash prize. 
Uh, I mean, the thing is, if you win, you get 300 at least, with a chance of 600. So it's always double the money. So 600 for the winner, 300 for the second, and 150 for the third. We have a spider pit opening, four tunnels, spider pit opening. And we have a Gundabet. I mean, I think that's a risky move from Smokey. I, I don't know why he did that. To be honest with you, I think you need to, you can kind of wait with your Trial Master. When you, you know, when you play against goblins and then you can send him forward and then you can turn him into anything you want in the last possible second. Because let's be real, Gundabad orcs are not bad, are not good against spiderlings, you know? So I, I don't know about that, you will see. I mean, he will have two against one situation if he waits for the second battalion before the war chance, but goblins can go for the creepy cave pads, but he doesn't. So now Smokey has to be kind of smart about this. Smokey has to beal, but try to not lose the Trial Master. 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 That's, that, that's so bad for Smokey, dude. How unlucky you need to be. This turning and fighting would be much, much better. He dealt zero damage to the Spiderlings, and he will lose now two battalions to one single Spider Pit. Spider Pit start. I'm gonna type. <laughs> Worst start ever, dude. Like, early Hall of the Kingsmen going ham and losing both the Gundabad to one single spider bit, Spiderling. That's so unfortunate. Morpheus, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Hey, Max, welcome. So, Spiderlings coming from the bottom side. And we have seen in the previous game, as Goblins against Men of the West, how good those Spiderlings can be. And, you know, and they have also proven their quality at the beginning of the game against Smokey. Post hole never works with Goblins, I don't know what, yeah. I mean, even, you know, sometimes. I mean, why he would turn them into the Gundabad or Orcs, you know, at the first place without waiting? Like, if you would wait. With the first battalion, he turns them into the pikemen, and the second battalion into the Gundabad orcs. Then he buffs them together. You could have at least taken down two tunnels, at least. But now he doesn't only not take any tunnels. He is not happy about the situation. It was lagging for a single second. It was freezing for a single second. I mean, that, you know, the thing is, that's tilting, you know, when you are 4-0 behind and you do such a risky opening in the fifth game and then it doesn't work out. I think it's really tilting, boys. Now, Spiderlings are coming and <laughs> look how many of them, <laughs> how many of them. I mean, that's supposed to be a bad matchup for Goblins, but, you know, it still is if, if Engma can scale. Engma is scaling so much harder than Goblins do and also so much faster than men does. So if it would be Engma in the previous game and not Man, this would be a different solution, a different outcome. Trust me, that one. The mill is under attack, but extroverts are dealing a lot of damage to the spiderlings. And now we have a counterattack. I mean, the good thing is the war chain is still available for Smokey. That would be like the worst case double times 10 if he would lose the two battalion and the war chain at the same time. So he was at least able to save the war chain. What is the builder doing? Smokey, are you out of your mind, Smokey? The builder is going down just like that too. Ah, uh, man, that's so bad. I mean, I, I'm speechless. Is Smokey's stepbrother playing or what is going on today? Banana team better for 14 months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Banana King Beta just resubscribed for 14 months. Ahoy. Short, fat, thick or thin. Vaseline will get it in. Pog. Hee hee. <laughs> Short, fat, thick or thin. Vaseline will get it in. Inside the jeans. Thank you for 14 months already, dude. Like over a year, man. That's crazy. Big commitment. The whole of the Kingsman is going to be taken down. The mill is going to be taken down. And this is an absolute disaster. Disaster if I've ever seen one. I don't know if Smokey is playing that worse than normal or if Avi is just playing out of his mind. I mean, there are, like, there are like some unlikely situations. The one thing you gotta be paying attention about when you play Engma with Trial Master, you gonna need to pay attention to this guy, to this guy behind. This is your heart and soul of your battalion. If you lose it, it's over. Now the counter commitment, the Goblin Cave number one has been taken down, or it was Spider Pit actually, taken down. The tunnel here has been taken down. The tunnel here has been taken down. 
and he might be not able to destroy this one. The Trailmaster is under attack. He has Spider Riders already on the field, and the Rubble will be rebuilding itself over time. And Sartoria Albert, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your sleep. Boys, it's, it's not looking good. It's not looking good for Smokey, guys. It's just not looking good for Smokey. 550 command points available for Avi and 250 command points for Engmar. That means he has only this one single mill. That's all he got in one all of the Kingsmen. That's all he got. Now he will buy the spike upgrade on Fortress and survive for 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, dude, 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 dude. Hey, Isengasm, you missed that, my friend. We had even an Isengard mirror match in this tournament, but you wasn't around. And for, I mean, to be honest, it was like five minutes. Oh, sweet. I never seen a competitive game of this. Wish it was on Steam. Unfortunately, it's not. But what you can do is you can actually download this game, you know? It's like an abandonware. So basically, you can get a free copy of that if you want to give it a shot. And Barindru maybe can actually link you to our video, which is like a step by step instruction guide which can help you to get this game downloaded and by the way thanks for the follow appreciate it oh the only you know two of <laughs> dude smoky 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 and avi 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 dude avi harvey now i know where the guy where the game where the name comes from avi harvey Guys, what do you think? I mean, I'm assuming that this game is not going to be winnable anymore from Smokey. He's going to say good luck in finals. It's obviously, saying thank you. Very sportmanship behavior. So basically, boys, it was not the way I was expecting it to be.